Hi friends, I'm Pastor Jack Keating at Emmanuel United Methodist Church in beautiful Camillus, New York. We're glad that you're here to worship with us this morning, this second Sunday of Easter. We're going to hear today about another one of the appearances of Jesus to his first disciples. This one comes along the road to Emmaus and will remind us once again how even when we can't recognize him, Jesus is with us. We're glad that you're here for worship with us this morning. We want you now to uh, join your hearts and your voices with Dan and Lisa as we warm up our voices and hearts and prepare for worship.
Thanks, Dan and Lisa. Will you join your heart with mine now in prayer? God, we pray that you will come and be with your people as we worship today. And even though we are not together physically in one place, we are together linked by your spirit. So we pray that your spirit would come and flow powerfully among your people so that we truly might be the body of Christ this day and always. Amen. Listen now as Pastor Pam reads for us this morning's scripture lesson. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. This is the story of the disciples encountering Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Listen now as I read our scripture. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he, as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and the, those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Luke is telling us here about two of Jesus' disciples who are walking along discussing all the events of the previous days when suddenly Jesus appears beside them, although they don't even know at first that it's him. And Jesus asks them, using today's vernacular, what you talking about? One of them named Cleopas answers him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? And then they go on to relate to him how they hoped that Jesus was the Messiah, the one who would save Israel. And all of this got me to thinking, when was the last time that God showed up in your life unannounced? Just last week, Becky and I realized that we're probably going to be wearing masks for much of our future in uh, this country and in our world, and we were wondering about where we might get some masks. We had heard the stories about internet orders that were never delivered, about imitation masks being sold as the real authentic thing, and about the total inability to purchase adequate personal protective equipment. And then, out of the blue, we received a package from a friend of ours, one of our son's friends, as a matter of fact. She lives in the Midwest, and by trade, she is a costume designer. And in that package were some beautiful homemade masks that she had created. This is one of them. With its pipe cleaner nose guard, and the coffee filter inside, this mask will protect us for months to come so that we might be healthy. Now, I am pretty sure that this young woman's gift is God showing up unannounced in our lives. Her gift had to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. And that reminds us that God provides for our needs even before we ask or can understand. That is God showing up in an unannounced way, and I think it happens in every one of our lives every day. You know, in my last church, we had a food pantry. It was one of the largest food pantries in Onondaga County. 
That little pantry supplied over 70,000 meals in that community each year. And when supplies would run low, undoubtedly a delivery would arrive, usually without any planning or knowledge on our part. In fact, it happened so often that we started changing the terms that we used for these gifts. Instead of calling them coincidences, we started calling them god coincidences because we wanted people to know where the food they were getting came from a mysterious, unannounced visit, and a gift from God. In verses 30 to 32 of this scripture today, these disciples are finally able to recognize Jesus, although he immediately disappears. And verse 32 has them asking one another, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? And that got me to wondering what it is that kept them from recognizing Jesus in the first place. I think I figured out that there's a couple of possibilities here. The first of those possibilities is that they were all caught up in the things that were going on. Jesus' death and the missing body and the reports of his resurrection. They were caught up, if you will, in the news of the day. Just like you and I obsess about political news on the internet and on the TV. Now, don't get me wrong. Being an informed citizen is very important. But what's, and what's going on in the world is important to know. Just as the details about what had happened to Jesus were vitally important. But we can get so engrossed in those things that we lose sight of Jesus. And secondly, I think that they were prevented from seeing Jesus that day because they had lost their hope. In verse 17, when Jesus asked what they were talking about, the original Greek says that they stood still and looked sad. When Jesus asked what things they might be referring to here, they said, and they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and the people. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped. We had hoped. These disciples that day were lost in hopelessness, and because of it, they could not see the end of the tunnel that would lead them to Jesus. You know, maybe today, some 2,000 years later, our goal should be to work more to remember that we are people of the resurrection, people of hope. And by hanging on to that hope with all that we have, we too might be able to see Jesus along the roads of our lives. Because scripture reminds us many times that Jesus is always searching us out and meeting us along the roads that we travel. So today, will you join me in committing to be even more attuned to the movement of God's Spirit in your life? It'll change the outlook of the world all around us. And it'll change the way we live our lives today. May this always be so. Amen. Now we will take the time to say an affirmation of faith. It is good for us to do this, to put our faith into words and to remember all of the things that we believe about our God and our Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And this particular affirmation of faith is a statement of faith of the United Church of Canada. So listen, please. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, 
to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to take some time now to share with you a litany of creation and faith. And I'm so thrilled to have Carol with me to help us as we uh, share this litany. So we invite you to relax and listen to these words. In times to come, your children will ask you, why did the Lord our God ask us to obey these laws? We will tell our children, once we were a slave people, and now we are free. Once we were no people, and now we are God's people. On that first morning, God called us. God called us from nothing. Out of nothing came being. Out of darkness came light. Out of chaos, order. Out of nothing came life. On that first morning, God called us. This morning, God calls us to be the people of faith in the midst of meaninglessness. In the midst of meaninglessness, God calls us to meaning. Out of brokenness, God calls us to wholeness. Out of divisiveness, God calls us to community. Out of tears, God calls us to laughter. Out of self-centeredness, God calls us to love one another. Out of unfaithfulness, God calls us to faith. Out of death, God calls us to life. And we will say to our children, come with us and worship God who has created and is creating in our midst. Keep with us and keep covenant. In times to come, we will tell our children. Once we were slaves, but now we are free. Once we were no people, but now we are God's people. Out of death to resurrection, out of chaos to rebirth, out of unfaithfulness to faith. Praise God for these wondrous gifts. Amen. Amen. We turn now to Pastor Jack, who will lead us in a time of morning prayer. 
Lord Jesus, the light of your love shines on, illuminating the places where you were present. As the first bewildered disciples pondered their, the stories of your appearance, you penetrated the darkness of their fear and you gave them a word of peace. You showed them those marks of evil that pierced your hands and your feet. You opened their minds to understand that you had to die to defeat such evil and death. We pray today that you'll increase our understanding, that you'll open our hearts and minds to be able to receive you. Bring to us, O oh God, the sense of your living presence as we go into this new week. Renew in us the faith you want us to have, the faith that is not afraid to reach out in your name and to share the treasure that you have given us. Lord, you know our hearts. You know our needs. And you know the hearts of those around us and their needs. And so we lift them before you now in prayer. Lord, in this time, hear our prayers. Finally, O oh God, we ask that you would bless all of us at Emmanuel with vision for the future and reverence for the past. Guide us each day as we minister to one another and to the world for which you gave yourself. Help us each day to bear witness to your name and to do that which you would have us to do. And we pray this in the powerful and holy name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We want to thank you for your ongoing support, your financial support, and your prayer support that has allowed Emmanuel to continue to do the ministry that we do in our community. We're so grateful for all of the gifts that you have provided that help us to do that. If you have a need for prayer, please contact either Pastor Pam or myself. Or if you know of somebody, or maybe you are somebody who needs a little bit of extra help, We've got some folks who will be glad to deliver some groceries or pick up a prescription for you or help in some other way during these difficult days. We're so blessed to be able to serve and to minister to the community around us. And so if you have need of that, please contact us and let us reach out and help. We thank you for all that you do and all that you give that makes Emmanuel the wonderful church that it is. Friends, go in peace. 
love and care for one another in the name of Jesus. And may you be blessed by the awareness of God's continual presence in power. May your path each day be lit by God's all-surrounding and indwelling spirit. And may the joy and the love and the wisdom of the risen Christ fill your hearts now and forevermore. Amen.